Welcome into Minnesota Vikings Now. I am Tom Downey here to preview the Vikings versus Lions game. Minnesota, you would assume, right, is the heavy favorite. They have almost locked up the NFC North. In fact, they clinched the division with a win over the Detroit Lions. But that's not what the bookies and Vegas expect to ha ha or happen this weekend. The Lions at home are a two-and-a-half-point favorite against Minnesota. That line alone has moved up a point and a half from this morning. When I checked it this morning, the Lions were a point favorite. Now it's the 2.5 in favor of Detroit, which means the money, the betters, are picking Detroit to take down Minnesota. Clearly, the, we can now play the nobody believes in a scar, which is pretty rare for a team that is on the verge and will eventually clinch the division crown this year in early December. If you think the Vikings are getting disrespected by national media, by betters, by the bookies themselves, head down to the comment section and spam skull. Type it multiple times if you guys want to show everyone that we're aware of the disrespect and the Vikings are going to prove them wrong, especially the Sunday against the Lions. Let's hit some injury news now here, beginning with the cornerbacks, right? Caleb Evans going to be out with a concussion. That was kind of ruled out quickly uh, for Evans against the Lions. The, I guess, positive flip here is that although Evans isn't expected to go, Cameron Danzler, who Evans kind of replaced when Danzler got hurt, is expected to return to the starting lineup for the Minnesota Vikings. He's going to be, at least the plan is, things can change, setbacks, whatnot, but hopefully not, none of those knock on wood, that Dan's will be activated from IR and go right back in the starting line. Hopefully help boost a, as we'll get into here in a moment, not the best Vikings pass defense or just defense overall. Let's hit some keys to the game then. What to watch for in this one. At number one, it is the Lions offense against the Vikings defense. A matchup of strengths and weaknesses. The Lions offense in most of the stats are a top 10 offense, yards per game, 8th in passing yards, 10th in rushing yards, 6th in points per game, 26.3, which is not what you're accustomed to for the Lions, 10th and 4th in, in third down percentage, so a lot of yards, a lot of points, good things happening there for Detroit. The issue here is that, eh, you know, Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift kind of rotate. It's the lack of an impact tight end. We'll talk about Hawkinson here in a little bit. I promise you guys that one. Jamison Williams getting his way fully back from injury. Some more speed along with DJ Chark. And Amon Ross St. Brown remains one of the best uh, slot receivers in the entire NFL. The issue is the Vikings defense has not nearly been that good so far this year. They're 32nd in yards per game and passing yards, which I don't want to be last in passing because that tends to mean bad things are happening to you. Uh, 16th in rushing yards allowed, 21st in points game allowed. So a lot of yards, some bend but don't break, and they're good at forcing turnovers, which can be inconsistent and cause issues there. Of course, help down the stretch there against the Jets, I suppose. And then 13th in third down percentage. So lots of yards when they get to third downs. They can have some success, but that's not a favorable matchup there for the Minnesota Vikings. So grade the Lions offensive weapons for me. Type in A, B, C, D, or F in the comments section, especially if the pin con or if the ad break, I should say, comes here on YouTube right now. What to watch for number two? How about the TJ Hawkinson revenge game? I find this one quite fun. Hawkinson, of course, in a shocking move, shifted from the Detroit Lions to the Minnesota Vikings and rather quickly became one of the top uh, targets for uh, Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position, 56 catches this year in total, 620 yards, four scores, even including Adam Thielen. You know, I would argue he has become the number two playmaker uh, among the, the receivers and tight ends over K.J. Osborne, over Adam Thielen as well. Justin Jefferson continues to be, you know, Justin Jefferson, the star guy himself. But Hawkinson has been a great addition to, to the Vikings, and I love revenge games. I'm thinking Hawkinson scores a touchdown this week against the Detroit Lions. Now, today's show is brought to you by Fetch, the free app that allows you to scan your receipts and earn points that can be redeemed for gift cards to your favorite stores, restaurants, or and or online retailers. It's super easy to use. You use the app to type a photo of your receipts from purchases from any store or simply click the e-receipt option, and Fetch can connect to your Amazon account, and you'll, you'll earn points for all shipped orders 
Plus, connect your email to earn points for every e-receipt you receive from Uber, Instacart, whatever purchase you make online. And those points can then be redeemed for gift cards at your favorite stores and restaurants. Fetch is available on iPhone and Android. Use our link, chatsports.com slash fetch, and enter promo code chat, C-H-A-T, to sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's chatsports.com slash fetch. It's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card. It's a free app, but the 5,000 bonus points is only for a limited time. So go get started right now. Chatsports.com slash fetch. Enter promo code chat, C-H-A-T, to get those bonus points between the free $5 gift card equivalent, free app. Really no reason not to go do it, folks. Links in the comment section and the description of today's video. Number three, where is the pass rush? Uh, the Vikings need a little bit more here out of J- D- uh, Daniel Hunter and Darius Smith, specifically as of late. Smith had that fantastic start to the year and is very much cooled down a little bit from that perspective. Now, here's what's going on with their numbers here. Seven sacks versus nine sacks. Hunter is getting going after he was a little bit quiet, especially early on this year. A lot of pressures, more tackles for Hunter, more stops. Well, by the way, the the stops in terms of it's a play that prevents a successful play on offense. So 45% of the yards on first down, 6% of the yards on on second down, and then 100% on third and fourth. So if it's a Third and one scenario, you get a tackle for no gain, that's a stop. If it's first and ten and they only get three yards, that's a stop in that scenario. Both have graded out well, but the issues in the passing defense in terms of the coverage has meant that it's not quite as successful from a sack perspective. You need them to still continue to find ways to ball out. The Lions have a great offensive line. If you can get pressure, though, on Jared Goff and move him off his platform, that's where you have more success against him. The Vikings need Hunter, Smith, etc. to do that in this game. So have you been disappointed in the pass rushing duo this year of Hunter and Smith? Be honest with me. Y for yes, N for no in the comments section. Go vote right now. What to watch for, number four. How about you just clinch the division? You had a chance to do it last week. You won. The Lions did not lose, and now you play again this week, so it's a little bit of a different situation there. The Vikings can be the first team to clinch their division title in 2022 with a win or a tie, which are un-American, against the Detroit Lions. That is it. It's actually super easy. Vikings are ten and two. Lions in five are, are, are five and seven. The Packers have their buy have their buy coming up. The Bears are three and ten. The Bears are base. They're out of the division race already. There. It's the Vikings and the Lions at this point. You beat the Lions just like that. The Vikings clinch. So will that happen this week? Type in C for they clinch or DC for they don't clinch. That's it. C or DC. I'm going to spam C, but I want to hear from you guys right now in the comments section. Number five, how about you get, I'll call it style points here too. How about you send a message? The Vikings have been a close contest team for years now. The Vikings have not beaten a team by 17 plus points in about three years. Great stat here from Dustin Baker. The last time was almost three years ago to the day, 12-15, so a week from now we'll call it, at the LA Chargers. That is the second longest such drought in the NFL behind the Houston Texans. They've lost several games by plus 71 points in that time frame, of course, as well. The Texans are a garbage football team. Nobody in the NFL, we saw that in the spread that was laid out this week, really believes in the Minnesota Vikings. That's why they're underdogs against a team that probably won't end up making the playoffs. I'd be shocked shocked if they did in the Detroit Lions. So change the narrative a little bit there. Go out and take down the Detroit Lions and do it with some style points. Yeah, I just want the win in the end, but wouldn't we all feel better if the Vikings won that game 30-10? to 10? Wouldn't we all feel a lot better? Your defense shuts out Jared Goff. You get a bunch of points against a not great Lions defense. Isn't that the ideal outcome for Minnesota pretty much every single week? It would be nice, even just one time this year, if the Vikings can blow out an inferior opponent. That's what truly great teams do in the end. Yeah, they win games, but you blow out teams too. Help out your point differential. Give yourself some confidence that just because you have a 14-point lead in the first half doesn't mean it's going to dwindle away in the second half. Get that changed and blow out the Lions this week. Now, if you made it to the end of the video... 
then you, cl you clearly like what you're doing. So you might as well hit that subscribe button right now. It's free here on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Vikings today. Free videos every single day, or at least close to it, when you subscribe right now.